Does that have threat? You either gotta do natural sugars or processed sugars. You uh, can't have both. Level one barbarian, you just wrote a one there. Mm. I'm aware. He's a wizard. Not yet, he's not. All right, so my boy's story is that uh, he was raised in a, uh, well, actually, he doesn't even remember the uh, exact uh, parameters of his uh, childhood. He just remembered he was raised in a small village that was attacked at some point. He got completely separated from his parents, wandered to the nearest town, and uh, was chased off by the people because they thought he was some sort of monster. And he lived in the sewer for many, many years until he became old enough to be able to fight. Uh, hit his parents and fought in the gladiatorial arena until he earned a little bit of a name for himself as a local celebrity. Uh, got into the town guard and worked there for a while until a particularly abrasive guard uh, managed to uh, grab a mask off his face, revealing who, what he was, and he's the only one who saw it. So Rhetorus uh, is his name. Uh, immediately uh, disemboweled him, and he got caught doing that. So he's either arrested, if, you know, depending on your setting, or on the run. But he's a chaotic good character, even though he doesn't bow to man. Gotta protect your own man. Well, the thing is, he you know figures that because of how he was responded to whenever he was a kid, he'd be treated as a monster if he was revealed in society for what he is. What was your strength again? Accidentally. Twelve. Not super strong. Anyone I have eleven strength. Who else has their story figured out? Um, my guy was raised, he's a full orc, raised by his orc brethren, but he is a beautiful motherfucker. He is alarmingly attractive to compare to even elves. That alone sets him aside from his clan. Uh, they're very war-based clans, warring and pillaging barbarians, of course, uh, across the landscape. So he is a black sheep of their kind. He is. He's, he's a beautiful man. Um, he's a orc. That's so beautiful, he's compared to elves. So he is definitely a uh, like freak. Yeah. Uh, so he, he's definitely been looked down upon by his own people for most of his life. Uh, this created emotional issues and con uh, courage issues. He's a very good fighter. But he definitely has issues when it comes to interacting with people to the point where he is selectively mute. Uh, he's very kind, which is once again very odd since his upbringing. But he kind of got the shit into the stick and he doesn't blame anybody else. He thinks it's his own fault. And that's why he endeavors, was always looked down upon essentially. Uh, he eventually left his tribe due to one issue or another and just couldn't take it anymore and has ventured forth on his own. Scott. Hold on. Give me a sec to bullshit some stuff. Uh... Mersia Ritman. Also, actually, just for fun, uh, David, remember David, that's who I was playing this campaign with. And he's playing back whenever we were doing second edition. So I asked if we could just do commonness roles. Like, everything else is, you know, just a standard point array. Mm -hmm. But as if we could just do commonness roles. And I actually got a 17. So I'm a very handsome boy also. But I hide my face. That's what's, that's the thing though. We can, we can have, yeah, we can have ours do a, the, uh, unknown brothers. Sounds like a good time. Half brothers at the very, well, has to be half brothers. So, my Because we don't know it, but it's going to be a thing. Well, I say that with fits in really well because you know, it could easily be that he was in the uh, orc village and uh, got separated and he just didn't remember a girl in the orc village at all. My guy is a tiefling ranger. I gave him the far traveler background, so he was born kind of far away, not actually in uh, wherever the hell we're at, but he spent most of his life kind of traveling around. He didn't really. Really, then? Really? Yeah. In the middle of somebody yeah. giving their expedition? I'm sorry. Yeah. Really? It's fine. His dad was also a ranger, but like kind of more local. That's fine. And That's after his dad died, he decided to leave the area and travel a little bit further. And he's just kept traveling. He doesn't get along with people super well because he's used to being out in the woods 
So Excellent. We got three introverts who hate yeah. other people. <laughs> That's uh, gonna be our bonding oh, point, guys. Uh, perfectly. That was actually the thing I forgot to mention is that my character he wants to be like he wants to do deeds to the point where he can be accepted for what he is. So he has like you know he wants to be a hero, even though he's yeah. even though he's really not equipped for it. My good values nature above people. So like, if y'all start setting forest fires or anything, it's not gonna go well. Do I only have three spells and start fires? <laughs> All right, that's fine. <laughs> Just be careful. She or she can, please. Wait, that's more than two sheets? Oh, the last one might be my spell sheet. Yeah, that's my spell sheet. All right. Never mind. So, you all have your, your life goals. You're wanting to be accepted for the most part. <laughs> this seems to be a running theme. Uh, so what brought your group together? Why did you start traveling? I don't know. I'll say my, my character was, like I said, either on the lamp or... or I mean, it's going to be up to you, technically. Yeah, that's right. Do you want us to, us to start out knowing each other, or do you want us to start out meeting each other? Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got a little one for your familiar? Yep. That's so cute. That's actually for my main, well, my character that I'm doing at the uh, game shop. My uh, wizard, well, full wizard. This guy's kind of a wizard melee hybrid. Also, my man's a big boy. He's a uh, six foot six and two hundred one pounds. I think I remember taking calligraphy with this dude too. I pressed it to the chicken, but not so far. So <laughs> don't jump, don't jump off of anything. Taurus. Did I say that right? Yep. This is what happened. Road Taurus. Like what now? <laughs> what you said? So you're record so you're recording this? Yeah, are we, just are we gonna be internet famous? Doubt it. I mean if you want to catch up with any of our games, they're all online already, so I see. Actually maybe hand me that notebook you're next to. Yep. Now I know you've played this character before, Jill. You don't have any insane items from that campaign. No. We were starting out one and we never played again. Oh, this was my noble character. She it was is. a noble who went, uh, was psionic noble. So half my points are actually into a noble class, which does not give you anything. I remember that one. Yep. Dude, she was doing well too. She was doing real well. <sighs> not as a noble, but a wealthy noble. Yeah. Seven, eight, one, one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is going real good. Oh, 20. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I wasted now. I did. I mean, I wasted like three low rolls too, so hopefully it's the next couple of the, cos the cosmic karma will bounce up. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and have you guys start not knowing each other yet. As I just real quick, it's this is a wizard class, but because it's, you know, my melee kind of specializing one, it, I can use light armor with no penalties. Alright, good to know. So, I'm a burb. You're an arco. Burb. The three of you have been, in your perspective areas, have been informed of a man called Bashir. He is a wizard across the lands who is studying the plant life in the area. The wizard of your prospective town had informed you that they have no, hadn't had contact with him for some while. They assume it's because he's been wrapped up in his work and he just hadn't gotten back to them. But they decided to ask some local adventurers to just stop by, and you, you lot were the ones that responded. For some, for whatever reason, you decided, yeah, I'll pay this wizard a visit. Along your travels, you eventually came along. To an outpost. Just real quick initiative to decide who shows up this outpost first. Oh. Sixteen. Oh no. Uh, you're gonna beat me. All right. Yeah. Do you want to like these with just paper just to write down your scores on? I have it on here. I was just like taking notes as well. Rotorus. It's yes. roughly midday, and you have walked up to this outpost. It's just one building. At this crossroad, it splits in three ways. You are walking down one path, headed towards the town of Ayapo, which 
is the town next to his, his, his tower resides right outside this town that, that you're headed towards. It's been a couple of days travel and you've just gotten to this outpost and you feel your adventure is still probably a week's more ahead of you. Do you stop by this outpost? And I'll stop in and probably look for some supplies. Okay, as you're heading in, you just, out of the corner of your eye, you notice someone else is coming in behind you. There's still a bit down the road, but it's just, you're aware that you're not the only one on this road. Fair enough. As you head inside this outpost, you first see that there's a place is a, essentially it's all set up. You can find, buy pretty much any general goods here. And you notice it's set up to where there, there's a stand there. And you're, you get this, the feeling based on the outside structure. This could also possibly serve as an inn as well. And the first person you see is actually a, a young male tiefling. He is currently sweeping the floor. Is he like, do I, is there a bartender behind the bar or is he the only one that looks like he works here? That is the only person in his room at the moment. Uh, I say, uh, hey, you there, tiefling. Know where to get some supplies? He uh, stops what he's doing and he, as he's. As if he only just now noticed that you're there. He's like, Mom! And he just wanders off into the next <laughs> room. <laughs> At this time, the second person. Uh, the you, you are the just. The van he walks in. <laughs> you're also walking along the road and you are just now coming upon this outpost. You two were headed towards the, uh, the Tower of the Wizard and you. Uh, not certain how much further you have to go, and there hasn't been a building in sight for a while. Do you choose to stop by this outpost? I'm gonna warn you right now, I rolled a two. I'm running late. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're coming in much later. <laughs> I'm running late. <laughs> I don't really need to. I have pretty much everything I need, but uh, I'll stop by for a little bit. Yeah, yeah you've been on your feet for a while. Good. Yeah. Do you, do you just take a seat? It's been a few minutes since the, the child has got. Oh. It's been a minute or two. It hasn't been too long. And. It's the been mother, a cop out. <laughs> 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 the mother has now uh, come out of the back room. Uh, you get the impression from the flower on her hands that she's been baking food. She is also a tiefling. Uh, by the way, their, their skin is a, a bit of a deep violet color. And she, she comes out and says, uh, hello there, uh, how, how can I help you? She uh, grabs a towel and starts wiping off her hands. Uh, first off, does she uh, look at me out because I have my face full of covered and hands full of covered? I, I don't look, I, don't, I look a she, little bit sketchy. <laughs> she doesn't really seem too off put by your appearance after all. Their locales seem seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Business might not come too frequently and they can't really, you, you could probably gather that they accept whatever Service okay. comes their way. Alright. Uh, that's really great. I was going through like all my little cracky sketches and all of a sudden I came across that and I was like, I forgot that existed. Let's see. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask about uh, some oh, supplies. Some uh water skins, hard pack, things like that. Alright. Uh, yes, uh, they do have the supplies you're out there and for them for the regular price, and I do not know that offhand. Uh, so I have to look that up. But as you're at the counter, you are now walking in. And you see that the shop is it's well stocked. It is, uh, as I mentioned before, it looks like it could serve as an inn as well if you chose to stay overnight. But you walk in, you see a, a female teething behind the counter, and she seems to be servicing this clothed figure who is now. Not that way. <laughs> so, yeah. What's that? Are there like yeah, just a it. couple tables nearby? Yes, there seems to be a little oh, setting off to, off to the right uh, side of this uh, entry room. I'll just uh, go You'll sit take down half, your, for half of your points of damage. <laughs> you said you were getting a water skin? I was going to get a water skin uh, like. Four or five days worth of hard tech and healers get up at all possible. 
yours too as well. I don't know how much target gold we have. Um, depends on your background. You Gladiator. That falls under a soldier. There's. So it's taking one round of damage per per second or one. I don't remember. We'll say you at least all have ten gold on you. And you do know that she uh, mentions the prices of the healer's kit is going to be five gold. The water skin is two silver. What was the other items you were wanting? A hard tech. Hard tech. It's like dried, uh, dried zombie that doesn't go bad. It's uh, like rations or something. Rations, okay. Uh, yeah, between the water skin and uh, how many days of rations were you after? Uh, uh, I feel like five, five. if possible. Yeah, between those two, you could probably only get away with spending two gold. Two but gold if gold. you wanted the hero's kit, that's an additional five. So seven gold. Yes, that right, works. Can I have an extra millions for drawing my character? As you're walking around the road, you suddenly find a gold piece lying on your Hell yeah! Oh, this is my other uh, oh, character. Oh, She's richer than you. <laughs> Rocket. That's funny. I live in the wild. I don't need money. This is the Naruto character, Sammy. <laughs> and uh, she uh, asked you, uh, is there wow. anything else you need at this time? Uh, we, we do offer um, a, um, a bed if you need to stay the night. Oh, if I just have a seat and take a quick rest, I might see where that leads me. Okay. Um, at, when you go and take, are you sitting next to him or at a different table? I'll probably just sit on a nearby table. All right. Um, as soon as you leave, she uh, walks over to you and she says, "Good day." So, um, are you all playing male characters or did you? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be a dude. Yeah. And Jill, are you play, you're playing a guy as well. Just okay. She walks over to you and says, uh, "Evening, sir. Is there anything I can help you with?" Uh, can I get a drink? And this is like the general goods as well. Yeah. Uh, would you guys have just like a empty journal? Like just a blank journal? Uh, yes, we have some of those. I can, uh, any particular size or color? Doesn't matter. All right. Uh, first what she does is she uh, get, goes into the back room and she uh, gets you a drink. And she will place that on your table first and then head over to one of the bookshelves and shoot. I don't even know if that's a magazine. You might have to make up some bullshit. Yeah, it's not on the list. She grabs a relatively fancy book and says, uh, This one costs one gold. We do have some that are cheaper, we do have some that are more expensive, but. It's just all on what kind you would like. That'll be fine. Uh, she hands you this book. Uh, oh, if you have any. Uh, I guess you have you make a check to figure out how many pages it has. Uh, inspection? Investigation or something like that? Okay. If you, if you want to. Yeah. Here. Just an investigation check? Yeah, just to take a quick guess of how many pages this book has. Uh, I got an eight, so just like I don't know. Well, you <laughs> certainly has more than a hundred. <laughs> cool. Oh, I just gosh. kind of flip through. I'm like, yeah, that's enough pages. <laughs> okay. Seems and uh, after servicing you, she uh, comes back to you and uh, were you wanting anything to drink or eat during your stay? Uh, uh, sure. Take a drink and a uh, bowl soup. All right. And upon you ordering some food, she actually calls out to her daughter in the back. The whole little thing went here. Uh, yeah. Uh, she calls out to uh, Gadriel her, um, that soup has been requested and that to uh, service that one as soon as possible. Some time passes and you are finally showing up to this outpost. You've been traveling for several days now, and it's still relatively midday. It's been a few minutes since they've shown up. And you, you know that your destination could still be quite a ways away Do you choose to stop at this outpost. Uh, yes, he's gonna stop at the outpost, but he's gonna look very filthy, like covered in mud, 
absolutely looks like he went through a fucking ringer. Um, and whenever he goes, he doesn't just walk in. He timidly knocks on the door. Okay. And... Good so actually your soup zone is being serviced to you now uh, by the mother, and suddenly you hear a, a timid knock at the door, and the mother is slightly confused. She looks up because it... There's this sign that says open for business on the door. I say it's my intention probably take him to the door. And uh, distracting me from my soup. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, she makes her set it down gently and brushes off her hands and she get, moves over towards the door and opens it. There is a 6'8", 230-pound orc at the door covered in mud. He's also distractingly handsome. Oh, he's covered in mud. Covered can't in tell mud. Oh, you well. can't tell? Okay. Can't tell real well. Like, he sport, definitely yeah. looks like he's from a barbarian tri- tribe, though, the way he's dressed. But he's covered in mud. Can't really tell his features too decently well. So his hair is all brown and mudded. You are visibly an orc. Yes. Um, he has no shirt. Upon seeing you, she uh, uh, takes like a moment of silence. Like a, a he's hunched over. He's not door. like trying to look. In, like he's trying to make himself look smaller. Good. You, you can it's tell, a very weird sight. <laughs> you, you, can, you can tell by the way she actually is like um, reciting something in her head, and she's like, uh, "Good evening, sir. Uh, can I help you?" Yes. Um, if you like, he nods his head anxiously. Anxiously. Well, we are open for business, and would you like to come in? She nods his head anxiously. She steps to the side and taking note of your appearance, she actually calls to her second oldest. Uh, yes, that was the one that was super nearly. Um, Anyam. <laughs> I can brand of all these names. <laughs> Dear God. She calls to Anyam and the, the, the young boy you saw earlier who who is no longer holding the broom at the moment, he walks in and she says, um, she calls for him to basically prepare to uh, clean the floor <laughs> as you walk through. She didn't want to... Bring clean linen, uh, child. <laughs> as she turns to you, uh, do you need something to clean yourself off with? Nods or, his head anxiously. Fetch some towels as well for our guests. And the boy hurries off into the side room and you can hear the footsteps as he walks further into the house. Is her plop, plop, plop of uh, mud falling off? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Do you need anything while you're waiting? He makes the gesture to a drink. Any particular kind of drink? Do you prefer water or something? He just strong? nods his head no. No. No to the water. No, he nods his head no to the any particular drink. Okay. Then she uh, hastens her way into the back room and fetches some water. You're out of character. Your character is mute, right? Uh, he's selectively mute. Yeah. But right now he hasn't said a word. It's in front of you. So there is now a moment where the three of you are alone in this room. So I'm probably still just kind of holding on my spoon like I'm looking at this sight. I just want to point out, though, he has like, he has, you won't see him yet, but I just want to point out because I just remembered what it was. Yeah, he's fucking ripped. Oh, no, he's absolutely ripped. <laughs> um, but no, he has brands across one of his shoulders, Sorry. so as he's paddling off, you might see that. He also, ironically, has a brand for, uh, I think that's the Horde, isn't it? Uh, where? I, I don't know why not that much. Similar to the Horde, but that's not the Horde so, symbol. Yeah, but that's what you see, is if you do, eventually, it might... I don't know if you might uh, roll to see that particular symbol is branded onto um, him, along with scars along one of his. Would his it right be covered shoulder. by the mud at the moment? Yes, right now. Okay. But he's going to towel off, so it's going to be vague. Well, then, visible. as uh, you start cleaning off, I would have them okay. roll a perception. But at the moment, do you, any of you do or say anything now that there are three? I mean, I'm going to continue to drink, but like, I am going to keep a wary eye on this odd individual. I'm going to roll to enjoy my soup. <laughs> it is not terribly. Oh, it's not terribly good, but it's powerful. No, it'd be her role. Like it would be the, the, the her person's role about how good it is, All right. versus soup. your role versus how you find it. Hold on, maybe your soup is just a little too hot, so it burned your tongue. Oh, that makes real. it slightly less. There you go. It's just too hot, is all. Yeah. 
We have to ask him, if, is it good soup or not? He has to roll Is it that. good soup? How good is that I must know. <laughs> I mean, it's like the best goddamn soup you ever had. I haven't even rolled yet. All right. Oh my god, I should get some of that soup. <laughs> All the checks are. Oh, hey, there's actually a small list of uh, basic food and drink lodging on here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, there's actually a, a lot of information on them, which is you nice. You can put your strawberry butts in this. Right. Good to know. Strawberry butts. Have a strawberry butt. Strawberry butts. I've seen someone who eats the green parts, and I'm like, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, That's why Uncle eats uh, the whole core of apple and the seeds. No, that's, that's, that's not poisonous. necessarily. That's yeah. not as bad. I mean, it's only poisonous if you eat, like, a fuck time. Right. But well, you still probably just shouldn't. <laughs> The soup is, as you would say, slightly above average, and from what you gather, you you do know that it was possibly made by a younger person, perhaps not as skilled as a fucking amateur. But as Cross. to whether or not you enjoy it, would be up to you, Master Chef Junior. I roll again now that it's pulled off. Oh, 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 oh. It's so, really good. Despite the soup being <laughs> he was raising it. He, he nothing special, like it does seem <laughs> exquisite to you. <laughs> so that was a natural twenty. Should one of them had tasted this soup, it would have just been average. But to you, it is a feast. Also, I just again, I want to point out the fact that I have this fucking full face sock just pulled up above my nose, <laughs> putting it <laughs> into my mouth. While just trying to kind of, while I'm kind of trying to do it. Stuffily. Are you still just standing around? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of waiting for the towel. It's like All right, uh, <laughs> very awkward and stiff. <laughs> See how long it takes to... I say, this, this is a moment that you, if you roll a good perception check, I'd say that you might notice that I have small tusks. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. <laughs> oh, God, this is not good. Why'd you give me these? <laughs> Can I also Curse roll you. a perception check? Yes, you may. I'm going to go with a solid 11. Mm. How well hidden are your tusks? Well, like I said, I have the the whole face hawk rolled up right now. I'm kind of doing that number. Are you trying to hide it though? I'm. I have my hand over it. I'm not making a real conscious effort, but I have my hand like right here, holding up the Wouldn't face hawk. Wouldn't that be stealth? Sock. I'm just it, rolling. I'd be stealth. Yeah, stealth or his sliding. Yeah. yeah you, go ahead and roll your. Whichever your best is. I got a thirteen. No, they're both the same. They're both the same. Oh, doesn't matter. Do you guys want popcorn at all? I have a new supply of popcorn. Uh, that's sure. a twelve. Sure. So you can beat a 12. I got a 13, so I notice a little bit. Spray water. Uh, Jill, you said you got a 12, right? I got an 11. 11, okay. I'm going by the meter beat rule, and if you did not meet, <laughs> she might have thought she saw a little glint of a thing, but she's not quite sure. But then I was like, ooh, is that sweet? So I notice in like... Yes, yeah, so you, you notice while well, this uh, club figure is eating his soup that he has a tusk, and... You can draw the correlation that you seem to be in a room filled with orcs. Yeah, I'm mildly interested in these two odd individuals. I would guess that through my travels through the woods, I ran into a couple orcs before, so it's not out of my realm of knowledge. Yes, but... definitely. Orcs are often found across the land through the wilderness, and you I'll be... likely along your journey here probably even encountered a few. I'm just going to be a little wary of these two individuals that I... Well, sharing Who space gives a with. cook time between one and five minutes? Yeah, that's Am I real to fucking uh, Yeah, so normally, like, it's I put them in there with for, like, five seconds. 55 it, seconds? Okay. It's it's like, says, it says between what, one and five what, minutes. What, what, what kind of cook time is that? What like, water did your uh, microwave? A lot. Uh, like, like, the fuck out of it. Just <sighs> listen to it. Yeah, oh, with popcorn, it's basically when the popping dies one down, that's when you want to stop. Yeah, 1,100. That's our time. That's the same hour or so. Yeah, 50. One minute, just pay attention to it at about 50 seconds. I was like, what kind of cook time gives you a five minute window, Ben? <laughs> it's uh, been a few... It is a really good <laughs> I was reading the back, I was like, that can't be if right. If you have a <laughs> shitty microwave, put this in there for five minutes. <laughs> it's been a t- uh, about two minutes now, and you notice the boy has yet to come back. He rolled very poorly on finding these towels. Jesus. So uh, the mo- you can hear the mother calling out to him, Anya, where are you? We need those towels. How big was this bowl of soup that I got? Damn it, Anya. Damn you, Anya. I'd say uh, it's a pretty decent size. She saw you were a big person and, oh. and made sure you got a big bowl. So I'm probably still just sitting there, dropping this in my face. It's around this time that a third, 
uh, a, a, a young female uh, wanders into the room. She is also a tiefling. And she sees the three of you. Is it the one who served me or is no, that the mother? No, this is a different me? one. Was that the daughter who served me or is that the mother who served me? You, you haven't seen the older daughter. Okay. You only heard. But you wouldn't take that a nine-year-old would be cooking in the kitchen. Ah. Oh, this is a small, this is a small tiefling girl. girl. Okay. Yes. There and she and unlike uh, this is the gold girl. <laughs> the mother was wearing a uh, relatively uh, nice clothing, so you you got get the sense that this family's well off. And the son was wearing decent clothing as well. This nine-year-old comes in with tattered, ripped clothing, and she's just carrying around a stick and throwing all over the place. Uh, is the mother in the room, or she go off after? No, she uh, went after her son to try and figure out what's going on with the cow situation. Uh. Do I, did I see like where the kitchen was? The kitchen, um, there's there's the bar, uh, the uh, the desk, and the door behind is where the kitchen's at. But the boy and the mother went to the side room and towards the back of the house. So in this room you're in, there's at least two, well, three doors, including the entrance. Jesus, this is what I'm thinking about butter. I'd say you said you walk in, she starts throwing a stick around. Yeah. Like she's waving around or actually throwing it. You, you gather it's like kind of like how a wizard whips a wand, but it flew out of her hand and across the room. Hmm. I don't really know what to. Hmm. You say it's about like nine year old looking? Yeah. Okay. Uh, See a young child. Uh, does it fly anywhere near me or is it just kind of way over someone else? Yeah, it actually kind of landed pretty near you. You, you could tell she wasn't like waving it in your direction, but with the way it flew out of her hand, it just kind of bounced off in your direction. All right, I'll, I'll uh, kind of reach for it, pick it off off the ground, and kind of toss it back at her. Okay, well, at this time, she yells out some incantation, and the wind around her whips, and the stick flies right back at you. At me? Yeah. Does it hit me? Yeah. Or is it supposed to hit me? Is it like supposed to land in my hand? If you want, go ahead and make an arcana check to see what just happened. As we determine it, it no, it's a natural. Roll. That's a thirteen. You're playing a wizard, technically. Oh, yes. Blade singer. You South actually class. would know that this child has. Well, the stick, as the wind around her whips and it flies the stick back in your direction. It, it sorely misses and actually flies out into the kitchen because of how bad that was. But you are able to ascertain that she has just performed the cantrip gust. Hmm. You say she's filthy? Actually, I just thought about it. Okay, never mind. I don't know you, so I wouldn't do that. Uh, let's see what do I have again. I completely forgot. And she yells at you, I can get it myself! <laughs> The arch is looking there over, extremely intrigued with what's going on. Now, one thing, <clears throat> I, I kind of forgot to mention this, but one thing you know about the world is, after during the Age of Peace, when the monsters disappeared, there was suddenly a decline in magic. Like, they've speculated over this period of time that, at best, maybe 10% are naturally born with uh, magical gifts. And now, uh, they can still be trained, and such as being a wizard, or being a bard, and you eventually find you learn magic through a teacher or something, but those who are naturally gifted in it are, have become rare. And, and you could speculate that this is what you just witnessed. A, a young uh, tiefling, magically gifted. Plop. All right, uh, whenever uh, she says I can get it myself, I'll just do a thumbs up while doing prestidigitation to make a little spark, a little shower spark in my thumb. Hmm. She was getting ready to start off in the kitchen. She, like, stops, sees this, and, like, goes a bit wide-eyed, like, but then she gets all mad, like, it's just like she doesn't know what to do with herself. So she storms off anyways. Because it's popcorn. 
During this spectacle, do either of you do anything? He is just watching this with the absolute most intriguing, which should be weird. This is an orc barbarian. That's not normally the reaction to mag- magic, or the, the normal orc reaction to magic. I try to shuffle a lot. Yeah. He has a small bowl so I can just keep it over here so I don't have to reach. No. <laughs> You lost one. You lost a lot more. No, I'm just gonna watch a knife about it. I'm gonna have to laugh at the situation, not necessarily at her. Oh. Well, she still hears your laughing. Says, I know magic, I hear you. <laughs> She's also in the kitchen at this point. And once you, um, once you, uh, she enters the kitchen, you can actually hear a bit of bickering between this small child and presumably her older sister. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Mere moments after the, uh, the young one goes into the kitchen and is bickering with her older sister, the mother finally comes in with the towels. <laughs> With her uh, son behind her, and she says, <coughs> I apologize for the way I am deeply sorry. I hear you go. He nods and takes them. He starts toweling off. He doesn't actually try to wipe it fully off. He's using it partially as a cover, but he's getting rid of the clumps and junk. And at this time, the two of you may make a perception check to notice this mark. Actually, can you make two to also notice how fair his features are? I made it. <laughs> I got second name for even. We'll, we'll make anything. one to assess the situation. Just tell me your total. Eighteen. And 19. And, um... 16. With your symbol, like, if you were clean, is it just like a fully prominent visible thing? Or would it be faded? Is it hard to see? Um, it's it's definitely an old scar, but it is covered in mud, so they would only see the outline of it. Okay, so... They would only see, like, a branded You actually both picture. were pretty high, so you could actually, you, you'll both be able to see this scar on... It, it, the scar, it reaches across the chest and over the shoulder and down the arm, but the actual symbol's on the right shoulder. Hmm. So this is something you take note of as he's cleaning in. And the mother's out uh, there um, trading off towels with you as one becomes uh, drenched and covered in mud and she hands you a new one as you're cleaning yourself. Uh, every time he finishes the towel, he folds it neatly. Um, with the mud I'll say to the uh, mother or bear. Uh, Say, so if you make me a deal yes, on the, uh, the dirty soup and the drink, I'll clean like up for you like real quick. Like that. At first, it looks like she's about to accept her offer, but um, make an insight. Fourteen. You detect that she seems to want to accept your offer, but she feels obligated to do a good job and do her, her services to you as a customer. And that perhaps accepting your help could damage their reputation as they are trying to also survive and make a living. She, and she has, has speaks up and says, no, 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 uh, you are our guest. Um, we will take care of it. You don't have to. We don't want to put you out of your way. So you wouldn't even take up and wouldn't even have to stand up. She probably won't know what I mean by that. I said, just hold up a towel, I'll show you what I mean. And I'll use, and she, if she does she. Yeah, she'll go out uh, And I'll towel. use the precipitation to clean a little square out of the uh, filth on the rag. Now, while you do know that, well actually you would know this being one yourself, that, um, uh, tieflings that have lived a while do eventually gain some inherent magical ability, but nothing like the the prestigitation spell. They, it's like Hellish Rebuke and a few other things. Yeah. So you would definitely know that uh, this is something that a non-magic user can't really achieve. Uh, she, she, she seems a bit stunned by this and says, uh, she, she's looking at all these towels that are accumulating, she says that what did you have in mind? Just give me the soup and the drink, uh, courtesy, and I'll call it even. Very well, yes. So as she gets done, or whatever, she's handed a towel and does it, I'll just clean it, clean it off as she holds it up. 
part of the voice This is the clean table. We'll hit, wait till she gets back in case our character has a reaction to what's transpired. Okay. Okay, so your towel's coming off filthy, and this clothed man eating the soup has offered to clean them, which they have an exchange and she accepts, and you notice that he is cleaning these towels within seconds. He quickly grabs it and then snippes it. And it's like, it seems to be just trying to like figure out this thing. And he's getting a little dirty again with his handprints, but at the same time, he's like trying to examine what the hell's going on. Hmm. I'll uh, kind of motion, or I'll kind of say, it's like, hold it up. You know. He holds it up. And I'll clean the muddy spots again. He starts sniffing it again. Do you have a knowledge arcane check? Do I? I think I actually do. Oh, I do. And you can roll to figure out what's going on. My best roll yet. Hell yeah, 12. Um, actually, I'm recording. 16. Well. What class are you? Barbarian. Apparently a barbarian. But, as this is a, a cantrip, essentially shitty magic, you are able to ascertain that he is using magic to clean these uh, towels. Now, you don't quite know exactly what spell he's using, as you are not in that the ma- yeah. magic yourself, but you are aware that magic is going on. You can smell that sweet, sweet magic. He's doing a magic. I smell his hands. <laughs> smell your hands. And you're I, seeing all this happen. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to run forward and snip my hand real fast. Rabbit. <laughs> oh, kind of like. At that point, you're close enough. You can probably actually roll to see if his 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 bare features, even with mud. You just really want to see how this happens of your boy is, don't you? Hell yeah! What was that perception? Yep. Uh, that's ten. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> handsome boy. It's now, weird. He's a freak. Was the roll to notice your handsomeness or to notice your scar better? Uh, I guess it could be both. He's just closer to his face yeah. now. So uh, well, it's really weird. It is really easy for you to tell just how charming and just stunning looking this orc is. The scar, however, no difference has changed there. As I spotted that shit like a hawk. Well, it should also be alarming. You are close enough. He has, like, amber gold glowing eyes, almost. As for you, while you have encountered orcs before, you're not quite sure if this is a, a, a usual thing? Yeah, this seems odd. I'm... <laughs> You have popcorn over there. Oh, you're, you already yeah. ate it? Oh yeah. my god, man. I'm assuming you that you're it's kind of taken right. aback by his lunging at you and sniffing your hands. Yeah. So, like, I'm... I, I see his reaction to this, and I'm just like, this clearly is not normal behavior <laughs> to sniff hands. So, like, I'm... I'm just gonna kind of, like, turn Wait, away you slightly. You so you can both have it, but he's clearly, you know... Yeah. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> I'm gonna I brought it over. <laughs> I'm gonna turn away slightly, but like still kind of watch them out of the corner of my eye, mm-hmm. so I'm not just like full on staring at the situation. At this point, the uh, ah. the young boy says, "You guys are weird." Fuck yeah, they are. Upon which the mother looks at him. Shush. Be nice to our guests. I just look at the boy and shake my head. Did there's like, the yes. smell on the towel yes, they are. have anything to do with the smell on his hands? Can I smell magic? Well, they smell clean because there's no longer dirt on them. But like can I smell, smell magic? Make a perception check. Hell yeah! <laughs> 20! <God damn it. laughs> yeah, you can smell magic. Hell yeah! <laughs> or at the very least, the magic of... I can smell like that magic. That transpired upon this uh, clothing. Magic. I mm-hmm. smell it. Magic. I want to smell for magic. This is going to come up later and you're going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I, that's, well, why, I gotta write this that's down. why I'm specifying what kind of magic it is right now. Smells. <laughs> I can't smell. I can smell, but I can't smell. Smell for magic. Magic. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm going to specify. Smells magic. 
What kind of magic can I spell? I'm, I'm trying to remember how to spell prestidigitation. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Isn't it? Transmutation. Transmutation? Transmagic. Hell yeah. So what does transmagic smell like? What does it smell like? Right it's down. your magic. What would your aura of magic smell like? Well, since I'm deciding this, I'd say that my uh, my uh, transmutation magic smell of uh, what's a what's an exotic berry? A, a what? goji berry. Uh, Duran. Let's just go with Duran. Uh, Duran. Let's the just band. go with uh, gooseberries. Gooseberry? Yeah. Gooseberries. You can smell the arcane magic that is uh, spewed upon this clothing, and it reminds me of, reminds you of gooseberries.